Today's show brought to you in part by GoToMeeting. For a free 30-day trial, use code podcast at gotomeeting.com. Phones are just for talking? Not necessarily. What's wrong with this picture is next. Hey everyone, it's another episode of What's Wrong With This Picture. We're at show 114. This is our photography apps little section. Mm -hmm. And we're going to be talking about a lot of apps in this series. But before we get into them, we need to talk about what we're going to be using them on. Because it's kind of important. And Dennis, you know, you and I were talking before and a lot of people have most people have cell phones and a lot of people are kind of using those cell phones instead of a snapshot mm -hmm. a photo or and, or camera and uh, maybe you're not in the market to get a DSLR or a, a fancier snapshot camera but we've got these and they've got great capability for well, the most part they do much better than than uh, the very early oh uh, yes those models are, horrible. are much better <laughs> and they're really handy to carry around I mean you don't have that camera bag and, yep. and uh, six lenses to uh, to drag around with you so there are a lot of good things to say about uh, uh, cell phone cameras mm -hmm. and uh, probably uh, being realistic about expectations. What do you really expect to get out of it is, is important. Uh, let's look at some of these uh, cell phones that uh, and some of the, f the features that might be in them. Yeah, what I did is I took the top five, I kind of hybrid both lists, the top five camera phones with the top five most popular phones that are purchased right now and obviously this will probably change by the time this episode is posted because mm -hmm. it's technology but what we want to talk about is the Samsung Galaxy 2 and uh, the specs on this has got an 8 megapixel camera autofocus continuous shot geotagging image stabilization uh, panorama smile detection uh, an <laughs> LED flash a and what I wanted to talk about with this one in particular was with the reviews on this Eight megapixels, they said, pretty shoddy of a camera for the phone. Why well, is that? Uh, yeah, what you find out is that megapixels aren't, uh, isn't the, the major um, uh, specification that mm -hmm. you want to look for. Generally speaking, any phone camera that has uh, five to eight megapixels is probably adequate and it is going to get as good a, uh, a photo as it's capable of, mm -hmm. assuming everything else is good, like the lens right. and, and the processor and all those other things. But in general, uh, don't worry too much about getting the largest megapixel uh, rating or specification on your, on your cell phone. Uh, it's more important to uh, really try these things out and find out which one is put together in such a way that they get really pleasing shots. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's the one you're going to want. Okay, so that's why some of these got different reviews, even though the megapixel number is a little bit shiny and bright and it looks mm -hmm. like, ooh, 8 megapixels, that's got to be good. Not the case. Uh, this next one is, is different. It's the HTC Evo 3D. It's a 3D camera, probably not going to be real popul popular for too much yeah. longer uh, but this the specs on this are kind of weird it's got two uh, five megapixel color CMOs uh, with autofocus for 3d five megapixel color CMOs with autofocus for 2d uh, 1.3 megapixel color see blah 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 mm -hmm. what does it mean uh, it means that they got a lot of specifications <laughs> the, real, the real question is do they do anything positive uh, right. for you uh, I'm a little skeptical of 3d for a, lot of, a lot of reasons uh, the reason that you have two 5 megapixel color CMOS uh, chips in there, because you have to have in order to get two images to get 3D. Mm -hmm. uh, and so uh, that, that's only important if 3D is going to be something that you really exploit. And if you were going to, you probably wouldn't do it with, with right. this camera. So uh, I'm inclined to discount a lot of this and just say it's a 5 megapixel camera. Uh, it probably, uh, again, if you try it and you find that it takes decent pictures, fine. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm not going to suggest that 3D is going to be the very best quality and therefore yeah. you should get one of these right away. No, it is kind of a fad and I think everyone knows that and it's more a novelty item right now and mm -hmm. get it, have fun while it's here. It'll probably be gone right? or not stick around too long. Uh, the next one here, we have the T-Mobile uh, my touch 4g 5 megapixel camera which is a little lower but this one actually rated higher on the camera portion it's got uh, the camera flash camera zoom front facing camera which a lot of the phones are now having which 
so the pixels the are lower though on the front facing camera right. opposed to the backside one so you need to make sure you're not taking the pictures you want to print with the front facing that's more for skype capabilities well, and things like that Communi maybe, yeah exactly yeah. Mm -hmm. um so or the self photos that so mm -hmm. many of us see way too often um anyway so it's got a lot of capabilities there but this one probably has a, d a better lens making it the better the pixels even though it's a little bit on the lower end yeah it, uh, doesn't matter it, there's enough there uh, yeah there are enough megapixels there to, to get a good picture uh, if the lens is a, is a high quality lens, uh, as high a quality as you can mm -hmm. get in a plastic lens uh, yeah. stuck in a, you know, <laughs> something that small. Uh, we'll later get into uh, talking about, in for photography in general, what uh, sensor size and all that sort of yeah. uh, thing means and how megapixels fit into that. But uh, for now, any of these cameras that, uh, in these f phones, the things that I would look at that be most important uh, would be the fact that if they have autofocus, that's a great feature. It is. Because uh, it's one of those things that you want to be able to get whatever you're taking pictures of in focus yeah. and do it easily. This, the, another thing that I think is important is image stabilization. You know, you try to take this picture and you're bouncing around with this thing, and even if you try to really hold still, you're going <laughs> to be moving some. Yeah. So image stabilization will help you to get that sharp shot that uh, otherwise would be just a little bit blurry. Uh, whether or not it has a panoramic capability, if it has it, you probably can use it, and especially in those scenes mm -hmm. where you're looking at landscapes and stuff like that, and you want to take three or four pictures and stitch them together mm -hmm. later. Uh, as far as face recognition and smile detection yeah, and all that sort of thing, fancy. really <laughs> kind of interesting ideas, but they're more sizzle, I think, yeah. than they have uh, or any meat on the bone. Uh, you know. the, so the main thing we want to look for are megapixels, the autofocus, and some image stabilization. Mm -hmm. And obviously with the megapixels, you want to make sure it's got a really good lens. And one of the top cameras, in my personal opinion, which I didn't even have my phone on me, mm -hmm. so I, I am an iPhone user, the 4S is incredible. Incredible. Now, the video capability is 1080p, which there's no phone out there that does that. The other ones are 720p. Mm -hmm. um, but the iPhone 4S has that. And, uh, you know, the 4S is a newer one with mm -hmm. Siri, our good friend Siri. Then there's the 4, then there's the 3S. And a few girlfriends and, uh, and I all had those phones, had the cameras on and held them up and the difference between the three of them. Holy cow. We know there's a difference there, but when we set them up, mm -hmm. Mine was the best, of course. Of course. Of course. So. But it was the latest. It's the latest and it's yeah. the greatest. It's the iPhone 4S, of course. It's got eight, eight megapixels. It's got the autofocus, the LED flash. You know, the flash, the LED flash, I'm not too impressed. It, it gives you the scary eyes and yeah. it's not the best, but well, it, for a camera. Well, it sometimes can be helpful to have that auxiliary light uh, capability. Yes. Uh, but to be able to turn it off is nice, too. Uh, yes, and yeah. you can have that with most phones. So these are a few of the phones. Another one, of course, we don't want to skip the uh, Droid Razor, which is the newest droid mm -hmm. out there. Um, eight megapixels. It's got the eight times digital zoom, which the zoom on cell phones... Uh, yeah, zoom with your feet, we talked about. Yeah, zoom with your feet. There, that's uh, something you'll hear from us uh, several times. Uh, the zoom... Uh, is plagued with the, f the more you zoom, the noisier the picture gets. And yeah. we'll talk about noise later too. But uh, the more static, the more noise is in the picture as you zoom uh, in closer and closer. So at some point, diminishing returns. Try to take most pictures without zooming any further than you have to. Okay, sounds good. Well, uh, I think we've kind of gone over the basics. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to talk about an app. An app. An app. Hey, Gabe, want to go for a walk? Gabe? 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 But are you lost? Hold on. If your pet is the adventuresome type, be sure he's connected to Pet Hub. A quick scan using any smartphone shares your pet's vital information so that even his wildest escapades have a happy ending. Pet Hub, reuniting pets with their families. Come on, Gabe, let's go home. All right, Dennis, we've gone over all the specs, what you should look for. We know a lot of people are maybe 
um, not investing in a snapshot camera and just putting that money, combining it into a really good cell phone, mm -hmm. uh, my recommendation would be the 4S. That's just me. You probably have a different one. Recommendation? I, I have a cell phone that's older than I am, I think, uh, in terms no. of digital age. <laughs> uh, I use a, uh, an Android uh, phone, uh, in this case a, a Droid X, uh, which tells you how old it really <laughs> is. Uh, but it still works, and, uh, and it does what I need to do. I don't do a lot of photographing. Well, you're a photographer. You're a professional right. photographer. Uh, that doesn't mean a lot of <laughs> professional photographers don't use cell phones because they do. Yeah. Uh, they get some interesting effects mm -hmm. with, with them, and we can we can use them from time to time. I usually use. Uh, this thing to document something I don't want to forget, like yeah. the sign in front of the the, uh, uh, the the panoramic view that I just took a picture of with yeah, my big exactly. camera. Yeah, uh, exactly. I want to remember what it is, so I'll take a picture of of the sign that says explains what that that view was. Yep, and the, of course the cute little things that the pets do and the grandkids do and yep. so on and so forth. So they're really great for that. But there are so many different apps out there that in enhance your photography that you take with your with your phone and i should say photography um with these fingers mm -hmm. because it's it's still a little bit different but you can add stylization to it some filters things like that so one app we're going to talk real briefly about today is instagram it's probably one of the most popular uh photo apps out there and there's a big reason for it it's because it's really easy to use i showed it to you mm -hmm. you, you weren't familiar with I it wasn't familiar. um yeah. and i showed him yesterday you got it. Right. And there's, uh, you take your picture, you can scan through the filters, figure out what filter you want, it applies it, and then you've got the social networking aspect to it, which is fantastic. Instagram within itself has its own social network, so you can follow your friends and see what pictures they're taking. Mm -hmm. But you can share it with Facebook, you can share it on Twitter, you can email it. Um, so you and kind of... And the price is pretty good, and too. And the, the price, is, what was that? I can't... Free. Free. Yeah. It was uh, uh, free 99 or free? I think Just it was... Free. Just free. Yeah. There's no 99 attached to that. So Instagram, if you're not familiar with it, check it out. We've got the link in our show notes. And the reason you may not have been familiar with it, because it's not available for droids yet. However, mm -hmm. South by Southwest is coming up, and they've got an article we've had in the show notes um, that talks about it's coming soon. Mm -hmm. So it's right now just for iOS devices, but you can look for it soon for Droid. So these are great ways to enhance your travel photography, things that you catch on the road. Without Simple. having to spend hundreds of dollars yeah. on an editing package yes. just to do that. Uh, not everyone needs to be using uh, Photoshop and spending two years learning how <laughs> to use it. So uh, yeah. uh, these things have a place and uh, they do some kind of interesting things and there's no reason not to uh, try them out and use yeah. them if you like them. Like we said, it's free. Try it out. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, this has been a great episode. We hope that you've learned something about your phone and maybe I'll upgrade and maybe I'll stick where you're at. Maybe you found you've got the best yeah, <laughs> from the show. Don't need it. You don't need it anymore. All right. So that's been today's episode. And uh, next week, we're going to hop back to our DSLR series, dig in a little deeper, a little bit more detail. Uh, so stay tuned for that. And of course, uh, what's wrong with this picture has a board on RVNN's Pinterest. Be sure to check that out. We're on Google plus twitter and facebook and any other social network that's out there we will join it we mm -hmm. will dennis will join it for us he's a big social media guy yeah, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. all right well thanks for joining us and we will see everyone next week